All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode 24, the Egyptian Pyramid Pump Shafts Part 2. So in tonight's episode, I am finally going to reveal an animation that was sent to me several months ago that demonstrates the primary mechanism of operation that I have proposed regarding the function of the Great Pyramid. So a gentleman by the name of Andre, one of my followers and subscribers in Germany, he purchased my book, then sent me this link on Facebook. And upon watching this video for the first time, I was absolutely ecstatic because it beautifully animates the exact same concept that I have proposed, again, that primary mechanism of operation that is involved in the function of the Great Pyramid. And I won't spoil the surprise at this point. But Andre, thank you so much for sending this over. It is an absolutely amazing demonstration. And at this point, I will simply say that when multiple independent researchers from across the globe all arrive at the exact same conclusion, this is an indication that the topic they are researching contains truth. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So as I began to develop the theory that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale, I started by evaluating the components of the pyramids, i.e. their chamber and shaft systems, as potentially being individual units of a chemical manufacturing process. So what does that mean? A chemical manufacturing process unit means the equipment assembled and connected by pipes or ducts to process raw materials and to manufacture an intended product. So how does this apply to the components of the Egyptian pyramids? So let's start with the reactors. The chambers of the Egyptian pyramids were meticulously engineered with functional architecture, which allowed them to facilitate chemical reactions, turning these stone chambers into chemical reactors. Let's go next to the product separators. We'll see this inside of the bent pyramid with the lower chamber system. This lower chamber system was designed to separate the product that was being created inside of that structure. You have recovery devices, i.e. your collection chambers, distillation units. We're going to see this component in regard to another pyramid that I haven't discussed yet here on the channel, but this is coming up soon in a future episode. You also have your connected ducts and piping i.e. the shaft systems that lead into your reactor chambers and which connect the reaction chambers inside of these structures. So these chemical manufacturing process units also include things like pressure relief devices, and we're also going to see this inside of the bent pyramid. I haven't discussed that quite yet, but just keep that in mind in regard to that structure. You also have valves and connectors. We're going to be discussing these valves, specifically one-way valves, in regard to the function of the Great Pyramid, and of course, these chemical manufacturing process units also include pumps, which is the topic for tonight's episode. When I returned home from Egypt in 2017, I began my research focusing specifically on the Red Pyramid of Dashur. This structure had my attention, and I knew that the meticulous engineering that went into designing the configuration of these chambers implied that they had a function. However, at that point, I hadn't quite realized exactly what that function was. So one of the first mental exercises that I performed when assessing the potential capabilities of these chambers to produce chemical reactions was to envision them being filled with water. So I pictured in my mind the chambers of the Red Pyramid being filled with water from below. And I thought about this for quite some time, and I slowly began to realize that you couldn't accomplish anything inside of these chambers without activating this northern pump shaft. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me that by activating this mechanism, you could raise the water level inside of these chambers. This mechanism also allowed the water inside of these first two chambers to be pushed through this connecting shaft into your third and final synthesis chamber. And I realized that I had discovered the primary mechanism of operation that was incorporated in the Egyptian pyramids to facilitate these chemical reactions because the water is not only going to push the gases into the upper vault of this chamber, the upper vault being specifically engineered with reduced volume towards the apex. 
that reduce volume is going to increase temperature and pressure, which facilitate those chemical reactions. It is also going to push the reaction from chamber two into the final synthesis chamber, and that could not be accomplished without the activation of this northern pump shaft. And here are just a couple of images from inside of the Red Pyramid's northern pump shaft. These were taken from my 2017, 2020, and 2021 research expeditions to Egypt so that you can see exactly what these pump shafts look like. Now, I'm going to insert the animation of the Red Pyramid with a brief description of exactly how this structure operated so that you can see this mechanism of operation actually functioning inside of the Egyptian pyramids, and then we're going to apply this exact same mechanism to the function of the Great Pyramid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in that animation, you can see that the function of the northern pump shaft and that piston mechanism are essential in the operation of the Red Pyramid. And I just wanted to follow up on a question that was proposed on a previous episode, which was what magical forces are going to move the gases from chamber number one into chamber number two? Well, those quote unquote magical forces are actually just very simple physics. And the two factors that allow this to occur are fluid dynamics and surface adhesion. So let's discuss fluid dynamics. When the water is drained out of chamber number one, it is going to flow through the connecting shaft into this drain located in chamber number two. So you will have a moving water system that flows from chamber number one through the connecting shaft into chamber number two. And this process is going to facilitate the movement of gases from chamber number one into chamber number two as the water flows from chamber number one into chamber number two. Now this process is going to be assisted by the second factor, which is called surface adhesion. So the gases that are located in the upper vault of your primary steam reformer will cling to the surface of the water. As the water is lowered in this chamber, those gases will continue to adhere to the surface of the water as it is flowing through the connecting shaft into chamber number two. So this fluid dynamic system and that surface adhesion is going to allow those gases, which are clinging to the surface of the water, to flow with that water as it moves through the, con through the connecting shaft, thus depositing those gases into your secondary air reformer. So those two factors, again, the fluid dynamic system and the surface adhesion will move the gases from chamber number one into chamber number two. Now, the various utilizations of these very basic physics are the ingenious mechanisms that were incorporated into the Egyptian pyramids that allow these individual components to be incorporated into a chemical manufacturing process that resulted in the production of chemicals on an industrial scale. So here's a diagram of the internal components of the bent pyramid. And I performed the exact same mental exercise as I began to evaluate the potential capabilities of this structure for the production of chemicals. So let's just envision this primary reaction chamber being partially filled with water. This would also fill your pump shaft system here. So what are we gonna do if we insert our pump block or our piston into this pump shaft? It is going to compress the water in this reaction chamber and force it to rise into the top of the chamber. So that is one mechanism of operation that is included in the bent pyramid, which is facilitated by this pump shaft. Let's now look at the lower separation chambers. If you begin to fill these chambers with water down here, it is going to fill 
If you insert your piston block into the pump shaft, it's gonna compress the water in this system, forcing the water back up through this connecting shaft back towards your primary reaction chamber. So those are some mechanisms of operation that are included in the function of the bent pyramid, which are activated by these pump shafts. And here's just a couple of pictures showing the northern pump shaft of the bent pyramid. Definitely note the significant deterioration in this lower section of the pump shaft. It has been completely eroded and basically is a rounded out shaft now as opposed to the perfect square that it once was. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, this is the interior components of the Great Pyramid. And I'm going to briefly review my theory about the function of the subterranean pump chamber and the northern pump shaft in preparation for the animation that I'm about to show. So I propose that this subterranean chamber is filled with water from the exterior reservoir. The water flows down this shaft, filling the subterranean chamber and also simultaneously filling this portion of the well shaft. So let's say that your exterior reservoir rises to about this height, which is the height of this northern descending pump shaft. As you fill this lower system, the water is also going to rise to a level that equals the water level in the exterior reservoir. When you activate this northern pump shaft with your piston block, it is going to compress the water in this lower system and force it up through the well shaft and this will begin to fill the inner chambers of the Great Pyramid, which are your extraction chamber and your contact process chamber. So just keep that process in mind. Again, that mechanism of operation, the piston shaft, compressing the water from this lower system and forcing it up through the well shaft to fill this inner chamber, because I'm gonna show that in the animation in just a moment. And here are just a couple of pictures of that descending shaft, which leads into the subterranean chamber of the Great Pyramid. Again, this area is off limits to the public, but I just happened to get a picture in here as there were researchers investigating this area when we were inside of the Great Pyramid in 2020. Now, as I insert this animation, keep in mind that this was developed by engineers in Germany, and they have independently arrived to the exact same conclusion that I have discovered regarding that mechanism of operation that forces the water from the subterranean chamber into the contact process chamber. However, there are several critical mistakes in their theory, which I will point out in the animation here in just a moment, but nonetheless, this animation beautifully demonstrates the exact same process that I have proposed regarding the function of the Great Pyramid. And as I mentioned in the introduction, when multiple independent researchers from across the planet that have never had any contact, when these researchers arrive at the same conclusion, they are investigating something that contains truth. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Von Anfang an nicht negiert diese Idee der Grabmäler, sondern er hat es einfach nicht aus Gegebenheit genommen. Er hat überlegt, was könnte es sein. Okay. Ich werde jetzt beginnen. Ja. Als erster den schrägen Gang. Hermann Waldhauser hat das Wasserhebewerk in zwei Abschnitte unterteilt: eine Unterstufe und eine Oberstufe. Durch einen unterirdischen Kanal gelangt das Nilwasser in die Felsenkammer, etwa 30 Meter unterhalb der Pyramidenbasis. Um einen Rückfluss des angesaugten Wassers in den unterirdischen Kanal zu verhindern, ist der Brunnenschacht mit einem Ventil versehen. Hat das aufsteigende Wasser diese Kammer bis zu einem bestimmten Punkt gefüllt, kann die Luft nicht mehr aus ihr entweichen. Also bildet sich an der Decke ein Luftpolster, welches für den Pumpvorgang von entscheidender Bedeutung ist. Das Wasser strömt weiter in den Hauptzylinder der Unterstufe. Es steigt in diesem Gang auf, bis der darin befindliche Kolben vollständig im Wasser steht und der eigentliche Pumpvorgang beginnen kann. Über ein Zugseil wird der Kolben rhythmisch auf und ab bewegt und das Wasser ins Schwingen gebracht. Das Luftpolster in der Felsenkammer dient dem Wasser hierbei als Federung. Auch der Kolben verfügt über ein Ventil. Dieses öffnet sich bei einer Abwärtsbewegung des Kolbens und lässt das Wasser hindurchströmen. Bei einer Aufwärtsbewegung schließt sich das Ventil und der Kolben saugt Wasser an. So wird das Wasser durch die Kraft mehrerer Männer in die Höhe gepumpt, über 100 Meter. Durch eine schmale Verbindungsleitung gelangt das Wasser in den Hauptzylinder der Oberstufe. 
Auch hier verhindert ein Ventil den Rückfluss des Wassers. Hat sich der Zylinder bis zu einer bestimmten Höhe mit Wasser gefüllt, setzt eine zweite Mannschaft den Kolben der Oberstufe in Gang. Darf ich Sie suchen, Herr Erdmann, dass Sie ja. den zweiten Kolben in Bewegung setzen? Ja, herzlich Gleichzeitig beginnt sich die sogenannte große Galerie. Ein schräges Wasserbassin mit ca. 1000 Kubikmeter. Auch in der Oberstufe beginnt das Wasser nun rhythmisch gegen ein Luftpolster zu schwingen. Dieses befindet sich in der Königinkammer. Mit einem weiteren Kolben wird das Wasser in die große Galerie gepumpt, die als eine Art Wasserspeicher dient. Ist die große Galerie vollständig gefüllt, fließt das Wasser weiter in die oberste Kammer der Pyramide, die Königskammer. Der sogenannte Sarkophag war wahrscheinlich ein Wassertrog für Reinigungsarbeiten. Er könnte aber auch als Auflage für die in diesem Bereich notwendigen Seilumlenkungen des Zugmechanismus gedient haben. Da sich auch in der Königskammer die Luft an der Decke staut, kann das... All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that animation which demonstrates the primary mechanism of operation that I have proposed regarding the function of the Great Pyramid, which is utilization of the subterranean chamber to pump water up through the well shaft to fill the internal components of the Great Pyramid. And I just wanted to make a few closing comments on the conclusions that were reached by this German engineering team. First, they propose that the water inside of this system comes from a subterranean shaft that leads back toward the Nile River. I don't necessarily disagree with this conclusion, and I do believe that the subterranean pump chamber pre-existed the construction of the Great Pyramid, and this subterranean system was utilized to pump water and distribute it across the Giza Plateau. The construction of the pyramid came later, and the subterranean system was incorporated as a unit of the chemical manufacturing process that eventually incorporated all four chambers. Second, this German engineering team also proposes that the function of this structure involves one-way valves, and I certainly agree with that. They suggest that there is a one-way valve located here in the subterranean chamber. Other researchers have suggested there, that there are one-way valves located here in the northern pump shaft and here in the upper well system, and I certainly agree with that. And those one-way valves are another indication that this is actually a chemical manufacturing sequence. If this was actually a pharaonic burial, why would this system include one-way valves? It certainly wouldn't need them if it was just intended for the internal of a pharaonic burial. Now, the third conclusion that was reached by this German team is that the water will flow from the Grand Gallery through the antechamber into the quote-unquote king's chamber. However, we all know that the antechamber was actually sealed with three red granite slabs that went all the way to the floor. So there is no way for the water to flow through this antechamber into the king's chamber because those red granite slabs, again, went all the way to the floor, thus sealing the king's chamber. The only thing that could move through this system would be gases that were moving in the opposite direction from your sulfur furnace through the four deep grooves that are located here on the southern wall of the antechamber, through the upper portion of the antechamber, into your contact process chamber. And as I described in the previous episode about the function of the Great Pyramid, this process occurs as the water level is then lowered in the contact process chamber, thus creating a vacuum mechanism that draws air through these air shafts into your sulfur furnace. And again, that draws the gases through the grooves in the antechamber into your contact process chamber. So, so there are several conclusions from this team that I 100% agree with and some that I vehemently disagree with. However, their animation is definitely a beautiful illustration of the exact same concept that I have proposed, which is that the subterranean system was used to pump water up through the well shaft into the internal components of the system. However, my theory incorporates for the operation of this sulfur furnace, the extraction chamber, which is located here, and all four of these units were incorporated into a chemical manufacturing process that resulted in the production of sulfuric acid. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available at thelandofchem.com. These are absolutely beautiful first edition print copies of the book. And if you'd like to help support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com, pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt, 
Either way, all of the orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, everyone, that is it for tonight's episode. This is episode 24, The Egyptian Pyramid Pump Shafts Part 2. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please leave a like. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you get notice whenever these videos premiere. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. I really love hearing everyone's feedback. And if you have any topics that you'd like for me to discuss on future episodes, please leave a comment below and I will definitely take those into consideration. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my IG handle is at the land of chem. I post daily on Instagram with exclusive photos and videos from all of my research expeditions to Egypt and Ireland. The next episode, episode 25, I have an absolute banger coming up for you and I know you're all going to enjoy it, so I won't spoil the surprise, but I will see you next time. <laughs>